Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it to be here and I'm um, glad to make a short um, presentation here. Uh, indeed, we're just coming from elections um, and we have a new president, a president, uh, new government uh, altogether, and there are interesting pronouncements and also movements in terms of actual, um, uh, you know, if you had to follow the money, actual movement of the money. Um, in Zambia, which is which is very good. And indeed, Lusaka is really not the fastest growing city. We have a new mining town, so always, which is growing very fast. So a secondary city has become very central in the whole conversation and debate. Uh, just maybe to bring everyone to debate and uh, to, 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 to the level where things are in Zambia. Um, the first major effort of to, to decentralize in Zambia started way back at independence uh, with significant move uh, in 1980 when the Kaunda's government at that time um, uh, created the local government of made the local government act of 1980 to come up with what was called integrated local uh, uh, local government, which is basically district council in those days. Um, and that that's, that was like one of the major steps uh, that the country saw. Uh, fast forward into 2000, we saw um, a revision or formulation of the devolution, basically decentralization policy that. Uh, emphasize the need to devolve the functions of the state. And then fast forward in 2013, we saw that policy being revised with significant emphasis that Zambia needed to function as a devolved country. Uh, the local government needed to be put at the core of things in terms of national development. And there are several efforts in between, including significant donor engagement in the whole process. Uh, but what we remain with up until this year is that resources remained at the core. Uh, the policy, the rhetoric, the politics, yes, talking of devolution, but money remained in Lusaka at the Ministry of Finance. And at the same time, accountability remains upwards instead of downwards. And this made the whole implementation process extremely difficult. And what we see in this new government, which to me I should mention, having read a number of policies and having written about centralization in Zambia, I did not sort of expect that uh, the new government, this current government would actually move in this direction. So it sort of came a bit of a surprise to see significant um, move, which is a risk at the same time, to actually uh, get the money down to the local people. For the first time, we see a huge budget being located to constituencies, all 150 constituencies. That's getting money right to the people from 1.6 million kwacha to 25.7 million kwacha. That's a huge jump, which all governments all along from 1964 up to this year have not done. So we, we expect a significant change in the way local government is going to function and perform at the local level, getting the money really to where the people are at the grassroots. In the various reports and research on devolution and sanitation efforts in Zambia, funding and capacity of local government has been a major issue. So this seems to be a significant move. And I should also mention that in the presidential uh, speeches and discussions, even in the budget, there's a significant uh, argument that the people need to drive their own affairs and local government must deliver in accordance with the, the current funding. So accountability being pushed down to the local level and like um, upwards. In terms of what, um, uh, of course there are a few comments that we need capacity at the local level, a discussion that it seems to be running also here. Um, and the capacity can be looked at different ways. Uh, if we truly devolve and make local government drive the process, uh, we can automatically begin to build capacity because capacity not fall from somewhere. Uh, it's going to happen by devolving, getting uh, the same central government systems operating at district level rather than accounting upwards, they account locally to the people. So devolving capacity might require a little bit of capacity building in terms of um, investment, but the fact that functions will happen at the local level with the World Development Committees playing a key role, um, to me that sounds like a good move. What does the president really want to get to with these movements, which are very risky because uh, there are risks in that if the funds get abused because certain things have not been put in place, he risks getting the blame that you are running a corrupt government. And uh, he risks falling in the trap of the conventional argument that no government has no capacity. So he's taking that step further. Uh, 
uh, in my view, and I think uh, when we analyze the presidential statements and also what has been what has come out of various um, you know, pieces of analysis, is that in the president is making and what well, the government is making this move. Partly, one, there will be eminent reforms in Zambia. Eminent uh, uh, reforms will happen, including getting the, the IMF program. So, partly is to shield the people uh, that at the lowest lo level of society from maybe significant cuts that may come at central government level. So get projects, get activities to the local people, even as you, uh, even as reforms happen at national level and as, even as the country pays huge debts externally, uh, at least some money must be flowing to the people to key, keep service delivery flowing. Things like water, sewerage and other services, waste management, running markets efficiently, and small projects, including education, providing support to vulnerable communities at that local level. I think that's one of the intentions. The second one, in my view, is to fight corruption at the center. We are coming from a regime where corruption was really endemic in the central government arrangement. And you see this in the statements that the president has spoken. Like, we are getting resources away from a clique of thieves in Lusaka to you, the people to manage your own affairs. These are his own statements and the ministers have moved on to speak uh, similar stuff. Then we also see um, where the president and, and, and so the budget is making deliberate move to say procurement needs to happen right in your constituents. We don't want a bridge to be repaired in the rural constituents. And the procurement is being done in Osaka and the guys getting those contracts are coming from bigger cities with the so-called capacity. So getting the money to the constituencies and keeping the money with the people is another intention. Previously, even little projects, the 1.6 million that was um, provided, contractors would come all the way from Osaka. So then what have you devolved? Those are the, some of the things that I think this new budget and this new move might uh, see us deliver as a country. Then in statements like, we need the people to manage their own affairs. That's again, pushing accountability downwards and not pushing accountability to the city. And we've seen you know, removal of party cadres, which goes along with this higher allocation in terms of funds, removing party cadres from markets, which are a key source of revenue, locally generated revenue by councils. Removing them is such a political risk. Uh, these are people who basically made you win. <laughs> these are people who fought to protect your vote. And you say, you cannot go in the market and do what the previous government was doing. The money belongs to the public and the local government uh, agencies, local councils need to collect this fund, deliver services. That's a huge uh, political risk. But I think there's commitment to get local government functioning. And then local government being basically taught with increased allocation and revenue coming from the markets, you're having the space to deliver. So get things um, happening. Uh, and largely, maybe the larger picture here is to deposit, slowly begin to depoliticize the local government, which is a huge problem in many parts of the country. Having done some work here and there, local government, that's where the politics happen. And in many cases, this is where things go wrong um, and, 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 and abuse happens in the whole process with huge characteristic relationships um, and, and no much of the developmental uh, local government uh, happening. So the present thing is moving to sort of lessen the politics in the local uh, government uh, arrangement. And the, uh, there are, of course, questions that might remain, um, including how can we then ensure that local government in Zambia, big and small towns, actually increase their revenue? That is, in terms of sequencing and providing a clear framework for certain services to be delivered by local government. Let's say uh, motor vehicle registration which is in the constitution provided as a function to be done by local government, but still there is a centralized agency that does that. So moving and, and moving several services down to the local government level, which actually generate revenue for the local government, that remains to be done. And I think it's the, it's the next test or next opportunity to actually begin to devolve um, and devolve more. In terms of what I think about um, Africa-wide, uh, developing country-wide in the way we can move, um, and implement centralization. In my view, the first one is for us to sort of better understand and tackle the political economy of decentralization. We cannot uh, ignore the fact that uh, the process will create winners and losers in the medium term. 
And this is where the politicians are scared to move in. Who is going to win, is going to lose. Which vehicle, personal to order vehicle, have to be given away from a particular officer to the local level. Uh, and these actors and elements in the whole government structure, particularly where you have a hierarchical one and not in a cooperative one like South Africa, you are going to have uh, pushbacks. Even in this case, there will be pushbacks in them. They're saying, look, I was enjoying all these services, but I can no longer enjoy them. Um, uh, and that will, be, that will be a challenge that we need to tackle. Uh, the, polit the relationship between the politicians and the technical staff and the community, that tripartite relationship requires to be better understood. Where is the role of the MP and the councillor in the whole of this setup? The other thing that I see is important for us to better understand um, is, is the sequencing of centralized functions. Uh, the money has been, yes, there is significant allocation. The money is going to move. There is effort to depoliticize um, the local government in Zambia, but, and I think in a number of other places, but the functions that are being decentralized, uh, uh, how are they sequenced? Uh, if I may draw from, from Zambia, we have agriculture as a decentralized function, but somebody working for agriculture and reporting to the town clerk within the local government gets less money uh, compared to a an expert who is working, holding a similar position in the local government. And that creates misalignments and implementation becomes difficult. Even the reporting becomes difficult. If you devolve and funds have come, but in terms of alignment, reporting, and um, uh, budgeting at the same time, uh, it remains sort of ministry focused and the funds are coming down then into account the town clerk, that becomes a bit of a challenge. And I think there are a number of things that need to be sequenced, devolved, and then financed using a budget that is locally prepared, not a budget prepared at national level, then things come down. And I want to conclude by saying, uh, we need, in my view, if I'm going to get the dividends of uh, decentralization, to invest in building cap uh, capacity for citizen oversight. Yeah. Uh, with increased uh, mandate to the local authority, there is need for increased oversight capacity from the people at the grassroots. Otherwise, we risk significant levels and extents of manipulation. And people will cry back, we were better with the central government than the local government. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>